An absolutely wild story of a theft of high-end baseball cards. Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for turning back in. So yesterday, Sports Collectors Daily reported that Memory Lane Auctions had shipped a box of 54 very high-end sports cards, FedEx, to the Strongsville show and had it delivered to the Best Western Hotel. And that box of cards worth $2 million then went missing, was stolen by somebody. Uh, there are a lot of questions here. Before I get started, I wanna talk about the Penny Sleever. The Penny Sleever is a new card supplies company that just rolled out yesterday. They're a family run business with the perspective of a collector. And I have spoken with the owner many times. He is a collector. They, they believe that you would rather spend your money on cards than on supplies, and they want to help you save money. Whether you need 260-point mags or 10,000 top loaders, the Penny Sleever has you covered. You can get 10% off your order at thepennysleever.com with code JWH. They sent me some samples. I will tell you that these are, in all honesty, the best semi-rigids I've ever had. Code JWH, thepennysleever.com. All right, let's jump back into this theft because people are pretty upset with memory lane. People who aren't involved in the auction are up, upset with memory lane. So let's get into the details here. You've got uh, reports of some very high-end cards, 54 cards totaling $2 million. Some of them are T206. Some of them are high-end mantles, uh, high-grade mantles, high-grade Clemente. Uh, 1914 Cracker Jacks, there are some big time cards and very, very rare cards that were set for auction the weekend after Strongsville and they were just stolen. And cameras show the, the box being delivered by FedEx to the front desk at the Best Western, being signed for by somebody there, uh, an employee at the Best Western. And then when somebody from Memory Lane showed up to pick them up, the cards were gone. The box was gone. Uh, but why, why would you deliver a box? Why would you FedEx a box to a Best Western? Sports Collectors Daily says that this is apparently fairly common with big auction houses. Uh, I don't understand it, but if that's the practice, it might have to end now. This might precipitate change. I'm sure that they're insured. There's some speculation that, you know, a normal dealer uh, policy won't cover memory lane because it was delivered and it, the coverage only covers up to delivery. And then it should be covered by uh, Best Western's insurance policy after that. But I'm also guessing that memory lane doesn't have standard dealer insurance. So what happened next after they found out that it had been stolen, Memory Lane told nobody, and then they went and allowed the auctions to take place still. And buyers bid up the auctions as you normally would because Memory Lane says that they were hoping, perhaps anticipating, that the cards would be returned on time. So these buyers bought cards that Memory Lane doesn't have anymore. And so a lot of people are very upset for the buyers. And, you know, there's a, a lot of people are saying, what if you sold stock? What if you sold off another high-end card to get into this card? And then you find out on Monday, because Memory Lane started calling buyers on Monday, uh, we don't have that card. And people are speculating that it's only auctioned off to uh, establish insurance values. That's a possibility, I think. I think it's more likely what, what is being reported that Memory Lane hoped that they would have the cards back on time. I have a hard time believing that Memory Lane is being advised by an insurance company or an attorney to run the auctions to get the, to establish value for insurance. And I, I don't, I can't imagine, and I could be very wrong here. I can't imagine an, an a insurance company saying, we need value, so run the auctions. That just seems like bad business. I think the easiest solution here is always the closest to being right, which is that Memory Lane thought, because they were working with the police, that they were close. And there is reportedly a suspect 
and they are expecting to get everything back. So maybe they thought, based on what the police were telling them, that they would have it back in time and be able to provide the cards to the buyers. Now, the sellers are also out all that money because the cards could be gone forever. Let's face it, the, the perpetrator, the person who stole it, may just destroy the cards to avoid having any, any evidence. It's unlikely, but that's, again, possibilities. So there are a lot of people who are upset with Merrill. I keep saying Merrill Lynch. It's Memory Lane. A lot of people upset with M Memory Lane auctions when I think the... Sure, they made some bad decisions. They shouldn't have FedExed, but that's pretty common in the industry. They shouldn't have had it, have it FedExed to the hotel, to the Best Western. They should have just left it at the FedEx facility where they probably more likely to be covered by their insurance. But how about some culpability for Best Western for just letting a box that they had signed for and it was in their possession walk out the door? I was in, I think it was a Best Western in Arizona a few weeks ago and I could walk into the up to the front desk several times a day and nobody would be there. They'd be outside smoking. And there's just a little room out back where they keep the, the belongings of people. It's not locked. You can just walk right in and take whatever you want at any time. It might not have been a Best Western. I don't, it was a, in that same family of chain hotels, though. So, really, you're at a hotel that's next door to the Strongsville show. People know that there are high-end cards at Strongsville. And a big box gets delivered to memory lane auctions at the front desk of uh, the Best Western. So it's pretty easy to put two and two together. This is a high-end box. You probably don't realize it's worth $2 million. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty wild story. And Hobby News Daily actually spoke with some auction house, heads of auction houses, including Ken Golden, who went on the record, saying that uh, for any item over $500,000, their policy is to deliver it via armored vehicle. But it doesn't specify if there are multiple items and they all add up to over half a million dollars. Would they deliver it to uh, via FedEx the way that m m Memory Lane did? I, I don't know. It's tough to say. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So as for this story, what do you think? Who is to blame? Do you think it should be normal practice for them to just FedEx packages? Will Memory Lane recover these cards? I guess that's the, the big question here. And will we see a mugshot of the perpetrator in the near future? I want to know. Is this person a collector or were they just an opportunist? Let me know in comments. Thanks very much for watching. I will be back again tomorrow with a fun video about Ken Griffey Jr. 1989 Upper Deck card.